inside, we're going to go outside, inside and outside. We're going to get him on the run, boys. And once we get him on the run, we're going to keep him on the run. And then we're going to go, 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 go. And we're not going to stop until we get across that goal line. This is the team they say is, is good. Well, I think we're better than them. They can't lick us. What do you say, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, it is that time again. It is that time again. Schedule prediction time. Yes, schedule prediction time is upon us for the Dallas Cowboys. Like the Eagles and my Eagles subscribers who weren't happy with the 10 and 7 record. You can't run away from your problems, okay? You can't look at the issues. Did you do enough on offense to compensate for the defense? Will Huff fill the shoes of Hassan Reddick? Will Bradbury's absence and Kenyon Mitchell be an upgrade? Will Cooper DeGene be able to start in this league? Will the linebacker, will N'Kobe Dean be able to be your number one linebacker? You know, a um, lot of questions, but again, it could go either way. You could win a couple more games. If everything falls into place, Eagles could win 12. I'm predicting 10. I'm sticking to it, okay? I'm, I'm sticking to it. I just want everybody to know when this video is over, I just changed my prediction for the Cowboys. Literally, I had it in my mind, and then when I did the Eagles schedule, I went back and really looked at the Cowboys schedule. I think the Cowboys schedule has more areas where they could lose a game that I think they're going to win and then turn around and vice versa. I think there's areas in the schedule where they could win a game like week one. I think I'm not going to change my prediction on the game, and we'll get to it in a minute, but I think they're probably going to win that game now. But I'm going to stick to my how I'm doing it, and I'll explain it how I go. I did give the Cowboys a different record. Not as good as I thought I, a previous was going to. Um, and when I added everything up, I don't do it. I just want everybody to understand. I don't do my predictions because I'm a Cowboy fan and I want them to win the division. I'm already on record. If Listen, I know the history, okay? I know. But... I think Dallas is upgraded in some key areas. And, you know, that's for another video. I will get into each game. But like my opening, I'm tired of the losing people. When I say losing, I get it. We've won 12 games in a, uh, for three straight years. I'm tired of losing in the, in the playoffs. So at the end of the day, it's all about what you do in the playoffs. But life's too short to think that way as far as not enjoying week one. I'm going to love. I'm going to be streaming. The Thursday night game, Ravens at the Chiefs. This is going to be fun. I'm going to be here for Friday. Hopefully they play the game in Brazil with all the wildfires. The Birds against the Green Bay. Hell of a game. I predicted Green Bay to win. It could easily go to the Birds. But you know how the schedule goes. Now, this is all boring injury people. If Jalen Hurts gets hurt, then obviously don't look at the record. If Dak gets hurt. Same thing. Don't look at the record. If if you lose A.J. Brown for a period of time, okay. If you lose Lane Johnson, I think that's probably the biggest one. If you lost Lane, that would be an issue. If Dallas loses uh, their left tackle. I think that's the area where if you're going to tell me they could potentially be lesser in year one, I, that, I mean, that's fair. But everything I've seen, he's looked very good. So let's dig into it, people. Um but before we get into it, a little bit of Dak Prescott news. I'm not going to do a video solely on Dak. I know I'm a YouTuber, and I probably should. 
itself, right? Whether you hate it or love it. But supposedly the hang up with the Dak Prescott deal is Dak now wants a long-term deal beyond four years. Dallas wants to keep it to a two, three, like a three or four year deal. Like a three, I'm hearing two, three years added on to the end of the year now. And Dak is looking for a five year deal. Dak wants to, and I don't blame him. He just had a child. He wants to, he has a beautiful house, big house, you know, the Dak yard, the whole nine yards. But he wants to stay. But if not, wherever he goes, expect him to have a big deal. Okay, and he's going to want to hold the cards as far as trades. Um, to me, that's interesting because the last contract, as we all know, Dak wanted a small, a short deal, and Dallas wanted a big deal. I think that tells you where Dak's mind is. This is he's looking at five years left in the league, maybe, and then go from there. He wants to play until he's 35, 36, and then get out. Um, or get to that point, see how his body feels. But he's looking to stay long-term. And if I'm the Cowboys, I should be excited about that. Okay? Um, I know why. Because when you want the longer year, now you're talking about bigger money for longer time. Um, I would be okay with a five-year deal. And stretch it out. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. If you've seen anything about Dak Prescott, he keeps himself in tip-top shape. All these quarterbacks are one hit away, and Dak doesn't run nowhere near as much as he used to. He got hurt outside the pocket, rolling out on a freak injury. Um, you know, so anyway, that's the Dak update. Um, will he get signed before the first game? I'm saying no, but who knows? We'll be here to cover it either way. But let's dig into it, people. Let's go. I know the much anticipated. Can't believe I just changed. I normally don't change. But after revisiting, we're going to get into it, people. We're going to get into where they could, I could be wrong and then make it up or vice versa. Week one, they travel to Cleveland. Okay. They travel to a Cleveland who is a banged up football team. I really wanted to give Dallas a win here. I really did. The reason why he didn't is because I want to keep it 100%. I want to keep it real. I want to be the guy who's not just a homer. You can say whatever you want. You can disagree. You can say, oh, yeah, Eagles this, Eagles that. I don't care. Just be respectful and know that when I am wrong, I will come out. I'm not going anywhere. I will tell you I'm wrong. But when you're wrong, please do the same. Hamid, again, you disappeared for months after the Eagles season. I didn't hear you after the three, after the losing streak got to two games. You, you took off and headed for the hills. So just don't do that. Just don't do that. And we'll, you can respect me, hopefully, and I can respect you. Dallas right now is a two and a half point underdog. Started out at one and a half, and it's basically locked in at two and a half points. So I think when I'm streaming this Sunday, I think they're going to win the game. But when I look at it, I have to be honest in let's look at the Dallas, the left tackle. Hold that thought. Left tackle going up against Miles Garrett. You know, that could be an issue. I think they're going to scheme it up. Here in the Dallas Cowboys, they're ultra, they're ultra, ultra confident. Um, but I'm going to predict them. I think it's a close game, people. I really do. I think what may hold them up is... Um, I think what might hold them up is the fact that Diggs may not be ready to go week one. I mean, I think he'll be okay, but then you got Kalen Carson. I think he's going to – that's a tough spot on the road. Now, the, the Browns are banged up. Uh, if we could run the ball against Cleveland, then we may win by 10. But I'm not going to give us a win in this game. I'm going to hope we can win. I'm going to root. And in the back of my mind, I'm kind of expecting us to win. But it just seems like a Dallas thing to do to go on the road week one. CD hasn't been there all training camp. I know he's an elite receiver, but still, you need to work with your quarterback. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I'm very, very excited for this game. Again, like the Eagles schedule, if they win this game, then add a win at the end of the year. Because I don't think 
I don't think this is a game. There's other spots in the schedule where Dallas' schedule was a lot harder to pick than the Eagles' schedule. I mean, we can, you know, I've already did the Eagles' schedule. Looking back, okay, you know, you could like, you could go to Tampa, I guess, and win, even, uh, you know, on revenge. So the Eagles could win 11, just like I have us losing a game down the road that I think we're probably going to win too, but I want to keep an ebb and flow. I always throw ebb and flow of the schedule too, you know? Like usually when you beat a division rival that following week, there's a bit of a letdown. And if you're playing a team who's treating that game like the Super Bowl, you could be in trouble. And we'll identify that. So Dallas takes the loss here in a close game. Um, again, tell me how I'm a homer when – most people think they're going to win the game. But Dallas takes the loss in a close game. Um, thank God we come home for week two. Uh, I don't think this team is going to be very good. We do play them early. So I don't know. I think that's probably a bad thing when you're playing New Orleans. But I don't know. Uh, but regardless, Dallas are home against the Saints. We're six and a half point favorite against New Orleans. Um, Dallas gets a W here. Probably closer game than it should. Um, Dallas wins at home. Uh, Dallas has had a home winning streak for quite some time. Not the Green Bay Packer playoff game, but this is a regular season game against the New Orleans Saints. I don't think the Saints are going to be that good, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Dallas takes the the win to get to one and one. Yes, one and one going into week three. Going into week three, where are we going? The Ravens come into town. Yes, 425. Again, this is a game I think Dallas can win. Uh, 425 at home. Dallas is a pretty much an even game, which tells you the Ravens are getting the love here. Um, plus one, minus one. I'm going to give the Ravens the win on the road. The Ravens always play Dallas tough in AT&T. Uh, tough game. Tough game. Um, Ravens go into AT&T Stadium. I think that's the game that Mike Tag and Kelly Canine are tailgating, I think. Sorry, guys. Mike, we need some luck in that game. Um, mobile quarterback. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how uh, Kalen Carson is holding up. We'll see how Diggs is looking. I'm giving them a loss. So we go to one and two. One and two, yes. One and two after three games, just to double check. Okay, yes. We lose in Cleveland, which I think we can win. But I'm, yeah, for the sake of this schedule prediction, we're going to stick with the loss. I'm not going to flip-flop. Win at home against New Orleans. Loss at home against Baltimore. Week four, yes, week four. Moving on to week four, we travel. Yes, we travel. Thursday night football, short week. They're not happy. Ravens, tough physical game, scary game. Dallas is a five-point favorite on the road on Thursday night football in MetLife Stadium. We don't lose to the Giants, at least not right now. If I, if everybody's telling me I how I have the Eagles a sweep in the Giants, get ready. That's probably what's going to happen with uh, the Cowboys. Dallas goes into MetLife and gets the W against the New York team where they beat them 40 to nothing. I was there last year. I will not be going to this game. Thursday night football doesn't work with my schedule. Um, so if we should lose this game, it's probably my fault. They blame me. But... Dallas goes in and takes care of the Giants. Uh, it might be close at halftime, but I think ultimately Dallas wins the game. Dallas wins the game on the road. Short week. Uh, brings their record back to 2-2 two and two going into week 5. Yes, week 5. On the road again. On the road again. I hate to get on the road again. This, they go to Sunday night football. Yes, Sunday night football. They travel to Pittsburgh and play Russell Wilson. I'm not as high on the Steelers as everybody else, or Russell Wilson for that matter. Steelers are a two-and-a-half-point underdog. 
Dallas is the road favorite. Yes, road favorite in prime time. Um, not a fan of the Steelers. Uh, I'm not. I think, uh, again, it's a close line because it's a close game. Looking at it, you know, um, Dallas could win that first game against Cleveland and lose this game. They're not losing both. Mark my words. They're either going to beat Deshaun Watson on the road week one, or they're going to beat Russell Wilson here. I'm going to stick to the latter. I think we go into Pittsburgh and get the W. Yes, we get the dub. So that brings us to three and two coming home against a revenge game, people. Yes, a revenge game, the fourth down that will never stop, even though we've analyzed it at nauseum. It wasn't the Dallas Cowboys' fault. Dallas covered who the officials told them who was eligible. If the, if the officials had said that this guy, the guy who Detroit thought was eligible, was eligible, they would have covered him as well. People act like they got screwed. Dallas covered the, the that the Detroit player who was eligible per the official. The official may have made a mistake, but that doesn't mean that the outcome would have been any different. Learn the game, people. So anyway, Dallas has a primetime game. Yes, yet another primetime game. 425 game of the week. The Lions at Dallas. Dallas is a one-point favorite, yet a one. That's telling you the Lions. I like the Lions here. I do. I like the Lions to come in and win uh, rather convincingly. Dallas has, had been on the road for a couple of weeks, or a short Thursday game, hit the road. Again, New York, come back East Coast to Pittsburgh, come home to play a hungry, for my mind, the best team in the NFC, uh, Detroit Lions. I think Detroit is a Super Bowl contender. I think if they I think they will be better than the 49ers this year. So the Detroit Lions, sorry everybody, they beat the Dallas Cowboys at AT&T. I hope Dallas wins. We'll be here to watch it. Detroit gets the W revenge game. The officials are not a part of it. It's going to come down to the fourth quarter. To give me the Lions. So that puts us at three and three going into the bye week. S week seven bye week. Um, that's good because I think we need the bye. I think we need the bye at this point. Just based on our schedule, like I told you, our schedule is rough. It's, it, I mean, I, I mean, it's rough. You know, we play Baltimore at home, then we go to New York on a Thursday night. Yeah, we win. War of attrition, you're beat up. Then you got to come back and play in Pittsburgh. And then you got to come home and play a hungry Lions team. Yeah, you're going to lose that Detroit game. So you're 3-3 three and three after six games. You're 500. I know my friend Drew has this 2-5. and five. We'll get to that because we got the Niners after the bye week. So moving to week eight. Let me know what you think about the week seven bye week too. Let me know what you think. Week eight, following the bye. Again, my Cowboys faithful. I think that we could win this game. I really do. Um, I feel like the Niners are going to take a step back. They're starting to see some of the chinks in the armor. I'm sorry, bang, bang. You may say, oh, it's just in your head. You can't just assume. Sure you can. There is a Super Bowl hangover. That is a real deal. But I am not going to pick the Dallas against the 49ers, whether it's home or away, until they win. So from now until they beat the 49ers, they're going to get an L coming out of the mailbox. Sorry. So, hey, listen, the mailbox will get an L. Let's, uh, let me show you the mailbox. The mailbox is ready here. Let's, let me see if I left anything in the mailbox. If anybody doesn't know, every week I, on Saturday nights uh, on, on our other channel, we, uh, I predict the, uh, the Cowboys game. So, the last prediction I had... 31-28, Chiefs over the 49ers. So I forget the final score of the Super Bowl, but that was my last prediction. It's still in there. So uh, tell me, 
And tell me I don't know, right? Tell me. Go ahead. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, week eight, following the bye week. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Where am I at, people? I, okay, I said the, okay, week eight, right. We lost to the Lions, had the bye week seven. Following the bye. Dallas, yet another primetime game. You know how it works, people. You know how this works. Sunday night football, 49ers. I think Dallas could absolutely win this game. I'm telling you, it's about time. Streaks are meant to be broken, okay? Streaks are meant to be broken, but I'm not going to pick them, okay? This is another game where, how could I be a homer? They're getting an L here. Until they win, and I'm like, yeah, bang, bang. I'm not going to predict it. Dallas loses here. Yes, Dallas loses in San Fran. To send them with a 3-4 and four record. Yes, 3-4. and four. I think that might be a heartbreaker. Either way, they got smoked last year. I don't think they're getting smoked against the 49ers. Niners find a way to win. I hope we win. My heart is with the Cowboys, but... Right now, if I'm picking now, and you know September second, you're taking an L. Dallas is three and four after seven, which is not bad based on our schedule and how I believe it's going to go from here. Drew, you have us at two and five, so I'm a game better than what you had, which isn't totally ridiculous. I think you would say that's fair, my guy. I'm sure you'll bitch and complain about something that I do coming up. It is what it is. I'm going to keep it real. This is what I think. We all are tired to our opinions, and I nailed it last year. So let's see. Uh, week nine. Yes, nine. Niner. Niner. Week nine following a crushing defeat. Although we played good in, in Levi. I think it's Levi Stadium in San Francisco. We take the L. But week nine. We look to bounce back. Yes. We visit the Falcons, who Dallas Cowboys are a road favorite by a point, which tells you that we're the team to beat. I'm not a fan of Kirk Cousins. I would have thought that this would thank if this was on prime time, this would be a slam dunk. I'm not telling you that Atlanta I think that division is not gonna be very good. I don't think I think Tampa's gonna win that division yet again. So Carolina stinks. New Orleans is going to stink. Atlanta is going to be playing Michael Penix before too long. And this is my opinion. I know they went out and got some older defensive guys. They're trying to make a run. We'll see. Maybe I'm totally off base. I know they got a lot of talent. B. John Robinson, Drake London. I, I mean, I know it. The tight end. Maybe I'm wrong. I have the Eagles beating Atlanta. I have the Cowboys beating Atlanta. The only thing going for the Atlanta is that it's not in prime time. And if Kirk Cousins is quarterbacking, the last time we, we played Kirk Cousins, we put up 40 points before he put up anything. I don't know that they scored. Put it in the comments. We blew their doors off. So, again, I think ebb and flow of the season, they go back, they get a W in Atlanta. I'm not that high on Atlanta. I know a lot of people are. I know Sam Darnold. Uh, doesn't play for Atlanta. I get it. My bad. The Minnesota. Minnesota. I get them confused because I got the teams like you know, similar. I think Atlanta has more talent. I do, but I don't know. Is Atlanta that good on defense? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to go with my gut and say we get the dub. But again, if we lose that game, I see it's beating Cleveland. You know, there are there are Times in the schedule where it could go the other way. So we're sitting here. We are at four and four after eight games coming home. Yes, coming home. Come on now. Week 10, I'll be at this game. I'll be at this game. 425, game of the week in Dallas. The line as we speak now, Dallas minus two. Very close game. Could go either way. Last time they played the Eagles at AT&T, they blew them out 30-13 to 13 last year. I don't know 
we could come up with excuses. All, everything being aside, doubt Dak Prescott plays good against the division. He just does. And at home, he's even better. Dallas wins this game. Probably a blowout. Probably. Just saying. Now, nah, I don't know it'll be a blowout because I expect the Eagles record-wise not to, as you already know, not to be as good. But I'm expecting Dallas to split with the Eagles again. I'm sorry. I am. That's what's going to happen. So Dallas wins the home game. Doesn't matter if it's a blowout or not. Not They get to win. Okay, so they're rolling here. Dallas gets over the 500 mark for the first time. They go to five and four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. They're five and four after 10 weeks. And then they stay at home. Yes, they stay at home, and this is another game. This is another game where, like I told you at the beginning of the video, where it's an ebb and flow situation where I think you beat, you have a big emotional high. You're coming off two nice wins against talented teams. And now you have a letdown. And the letdown is the East Side Harold's Houston Texans. Yes, they come rolling in with a CJ Stroud. The only thing that scares me is this is Monday Night Football. Dallas is a three point favorite, basically a push game. I see two and a half, I see some twos, I see threes. Dallas is going to find a way to blow this game. Houston Texans always seem to, to find a way to beat Dallas. The good thing is it's a non-conference game, okay? Houston the Texans go in, win the, whatever the hell the name of that trophy is. They go in and beat Dallas on Monday Night Football. We're good at Sunday Night Football. I don't know about Monday Night Football. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I'm picking Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud to beat his buddy Micah Parsons. So now that puts us at one, two, three, four, five, and five after 10 games. Yes. Yeah, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We are five and five after 10. Now we lost to Houston and we got to hit the road against none other than Dan Quinn. Yes. Dan Quinn. This is not good, people. This is not, this is a Dan Quinn, if nothing else, is a the unbelievable motivator. I don't know. Is it Dan Quinn? Wait, let me see. Yeah, week 12. Let me see. I think I went too far. Week 12. Week 12. Week 12. Yeah, I went too far, everybody. Week 12. Cowboys visit the Washington Commanders. That Sure, Dallas could win this game. Dallas is a three-and-a-half-point road. favorite Dallas could win this game but in the in the way that I think Dan Quinn knows how to play this team I think Dan Quinn is going to pull out the stops to beat his old team this is like the Dan Quinn Super Bowl I think we lose in at the uh, FedEx field I think we take the L at the sewage plant I do Sorry, everybody. I think Dan Quinn finds a way to beat us. So, Dan Quinn finds a way to beat us. Where did my thing go? Oh, wait, let me go up there. Oh, well. Dan Quinn finds a way to beat us to give us back-to-back -back L's. Dallas is reeling right now. Dallas is one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. Dallas is five and six after 11 games. What do you need after something like that? You need the New York Giants is what you need. You need the Giants to help you out and help you out. They will week 13. Dallas comes home. Thanksgiving day, four days later, right now, Dallas is a nine and a half point favorite. They smoke the Giants on Thanksgiving. Sorry, Cop Pizzle. Sorry, my guy. But this is where we make our... It looks like this is where we make our run. Like Bill Parcells always said, where are you at starting from Thanksgiving on? You need to be in playoff mode. And that's just the way it is. We get the W. We throttle the Giants on Thanksgiving. And we go to... 
back to the 500 mark. One, two, three. We are six and six after 13 weeks. By week is long past. We stay home yet again. Yes. If we stay home, thank God. Week 14. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think we're home. Yes. Week 14. We go from the Thanksgiving Day game to the Monday night game. That's like another bye week. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. December 9th, we're a two-point favorite. One and a half. I see one, one and a half, two. Tough game. Very tough game. But the mini bye week is going to help us. We played the Bengals. We beat the Bengals. Yes. We beat the Bengals. Week 14, we beat the Bengals. So now we are seven and six after 14. We're seven and six. We hit the road week 15. We visit the Carolina Panthers. I've already said I think the Carolina Panthers are some of the – It's they may be one of the worst teams in the league. They're definitely going to be in the bottom five. Sorry, Bryce Young. I don't think he's an answer at quarterback. Dallas visit the Panthers. One o'clock game, December 15th. Dallas is a six-and-a-half point favorite on the road. Dallas thumps – the Panthers, everybody's back at this point. We're rolling healthy. We go to... I keep looking at the, uh, the Eagles schedule like an idiot. We go to 8-6. and six. We are 8-6 and six after 15. Week 16, let's go. Week 16, yes. Week 16. Tough game, very tough game. Yet another primetime game. Thank God it's at home. I don't like playing in Tampa Bay. Buccaneers to come to the Cowboys on Sunday night football. Yet another primetime game. NFL loves the Cowboys. Dallas is a six-point favorite. I see five and a half in some areas. So I see fives. Big favorite at home. Dallas is rolling. Ever since the Thanksgiving Day game, Dallas beats the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday night football. I'm loving it. Dallas' schedule. Dallas moves up to 9-6. and six. Yes, 9-6. and six. We already know that the Eagles have a 10-7 and seven record. Ooh, what are we going to do? 9-6. and six. Nine and 6 What are we going to do here? Well, you know, we're going to Philly next, late in the season. That's what's going to happen. You're going to take an L at the Eagles. It hurts me. To, it pains me to say it. Eagles are fighting for their division lives. Eagles right now are a two to two and a half point favorite. December 29th, it's a couple days before New Year's, cold's going to be a cold day. Eagles get the win. Why? Because they're more desperate. They need the win. Dallas splits with the Eagles like they normally do. Anybody that says anything otherwise, you're a fanboy. All right? The only time that one team beats the other team twice usually is when the last game don't mean nothing, or if one team is horrendous. And I don't think either of these teams are horrendous. That brings up Week 18. Yes, there are no lines for Week 18. This can be flexed. But what I could tell you is, what I could tell you is, the Commanders aren't sweeping the Cowboys. The Commanders come into AT&T. If Dallas needs the game, the Commanders are taking the L. And I already I gave you my Commander's schedule prediction, which means they're going to have eight wins going into this game. They may be fighting for a playoff. They're not beating us. They're not sweeping us in AT&T. Hell no. Dallas wins. Oh, my God. What do we do? What's going to happen? They're going to know what's going to happen. Dallas is going to know what's going to happen because um, Dallas has just gone to 10-7. and seven. They know the, the playoff implications. They know what's going on with the division. So what does that mean? 
The Eagles are 10 and 7. The Dallas are 10 and 7. Now, before we get into that, let's go back and look at you know, some of the ways that I think it could go different. I think they could beat Cleveland. Just like there's a couple spots on the Eagles schedule where you guys can win. It could go either way, people. But I got the Cowboys and the Eagles both finishing at 10 and 7. Both are in the playoffs. But who wins the division? Do the Eagles win a division? Does Dallas win back-to-back? -back? Well, based on how I picked it, I went back and looked. Let me see. I went back and looked. And the Eagles' divisional record, okay? Let's look at division. Eagles are one. They're one and one, two and one, two and two, three and two, four and two. So they split with Dallas. Let's see here. Eagles, 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 Eagles. They win against Washington. They lose against Washington. They win against Dallas. They lose against Dallas. Okay. So they split with us in Washington, and then they lose both to the Giants. So they have a 4-2 and two schedule. We, Dallas, has a 4-2 and two schedule also. So let's look at conference. That would be the next tiebreaker. One. They're one and one. They're two and one. They're two and two. They're three and two. They're three and three. They're four and three. They're four and four. Five and four. Five and five. Six and five. Seven and five. <sighs> They're seven and five. You know what that means, don't you? You know what that means, baby. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Go! Go! Dallas Cowboys! It's the gold team of the senior pros. Yeah, baby. Look at that shit. We go eight and four. One and oh. Two and oh. Two and one. Two and two. Three and two. Four and two, four and three, five and three, six and a three, seven and three, seven and four, eight and four. Yes, Dallas Cowboys end up winning back-to-back -back division championships. Not said done by the Philadelphia Eagles. Wow, wow, wow. Now, that all being said, Dallas could be the wild card and Eagles could win if Eagles... You know, go into Tampa. Let's go back and look. Let's go back and you guys act like it's that far-fetched. Okay. Could you win in Green Bay? That would be huge. That's why this game is big, people. I have you beaten Atlanta. I have you beaten there. I mean, I don't think you're winning both of these games. I don't. I think you guys are on something if you think you're just going to roll past everybody. How you finished last year? I don't. I think I'm more than fair. I got you beaten Cleveland. I got us losing to Cleveland. I got you losing the Bengals. I got you beating Jacksonville. You ain't sweeping us. You ain't sweeping us. Okay? I got you beating Washington. This one here, this is another game. Drew, I know you're going to be at the game. If you win that, that could help you win the uh, division. You just got to win one of these games and not lose any other NFC games. And again, the Washington. You guys... You guys should have lost both last year, okay? You did it with mirrors. Congratulations. Congratulations. But at the end of the day, baby, at the end of the day, here we go. Ready? All that hard work. I was at Detroit, baby. Teams. Seven rounds. Guys like Marshawn Young Mueller. Men, who today Guys like Kellen Carson. Players. Football League. Guys like Tyler Guy. Lives are changed. Fates are 
Dynasties. Dynasties. Guys like Cooper Beebe. Dynasties are born. And the clock Guys is like Maris Taliafal. Of course. These are the guys. Guys I'm like Ryan Flournoy. Draft day. These are the guys that are going to bring us back. Last year, the draft was not good. Last year, the draft was not good for us. But Overshone is back, baby. Yes, Overshone is back. And Mozzie Smith is going to step his game up. Is he going to be a pro bowler? Probably not. But that's what I have. I had them finishing with the exact record as the Eagles. It all going to come down to conference, which makes this Friday night's game that much more important. Every NFC game is a big deal. Divisional games are a big deal. So tell me what you think. I just had a sneezing fit. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me how you think I'm a moron. Tell me how you think I'm right. I know some people thought I was going to go with 11. Listen, I wasn't trying to be over dramatic. I just rethought. I think that's a good schedule for Dallas, 10 and 7. I really do. I really do. I mean, could they win more? Of course. This is a prognostication. But. Here, let me get this out of the way. I got the mystic on my side, and he will be activated. Yes, this is a real voodoo doll. I'm not into that stuff. I'll be nice. Trust me. And then I got the mystic, and on the other side, I got his girl who's looking in. Dang, he shot out to Chuck. I got his girl. Let's see if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you can't. There you go. She's up in the top right above the meme machine. She freaky. But regardless, um, that's what I got. That's what I got. Let me know what you think about it. I think Dallas um, wins the division with 10 and 7. I think the Eagles and Dallas are both in the playoffs. And who am I kidding? That's all that really matters is what you do in the playoffs. So uh, I'm hoping that we have some sort of... Uh, run in the playoffs, but I'm not ready to predict any of that. Just like I'm not ready to predict uh, the 49ers. I didn't think I was going to give Dallas a, the uh, division, yeah, quite frankly. I tried everything I could to think in my mind without just giving game to the Eagles how I think they can win. Now, Eagles can win the division. Make no mistake. I just think that uh, the schedule sets up rather well towards the end of the year for the Cowboys. Um and revenge games like Cleveland, revenge games against the Niners, I think we could absolutely win. Winning at home against Houston on a Monday night football, we could win that game. We could lose. So like the game, I already have us losing at home against Detroit on prime time at home. We could win that game. I have us winning games. The games I think we could lose are AFC games. At the Steelers, if they're not on their game and then they get a lead, they can run the ball. Okay, we can lose at Pittsburgh. You know? Maybe home against uh, Cincinnati, Joe Burrow, maybe. I don't think they have the running game that they had, but, you know, we'll see. The games I think we can really lose are all AFC games. I already gave them losses against, I already gave them a loss against Detroit and the Niners. Splitting with the Eagles. I even split. I split with the Commanders. So it's good enough for me to split with the Washington Commanders, but not for the Eagles. Keep it real. But all right, everybody. I'm going to finish this video like I started. Drink it in. Listen to it. It's beautiful. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Winners win and losers lose. I can't explain it any better than that. I don't know how it happens, but winners win. And if you create a culture of losing, if you keep being a victim, if you keep letting losing happen to you, if you keep letting people do you and treat you any kind of way, it's going to become a culture. Clean men who 
is a gleam. Let's get the gleam. All right, let's go. All right, everybody. Let me know what you think. Even you Eagle fans, I know you hate it, but that's what I think, man. Either way, we got football in two days, baby. Let's go. I'll talk to everybody later. How about them Cowboys? Yeah! Peace. No one, and I mean no one, comes into our house and pushes us around. This is your game now, gentlemen. And for you seniors, it's your last one, so make it count. Because you'll remember it for the rest of your lives. Let's get them. <laughs>